All set, Steve. Go ahead. Okay, welcome to the Okay, welcome to the Monday, January the 4th, 2021 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves by speaking their names. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. Anna Smith, member. And Steve Everett, member. And Meredith? Oh, Benchini, member. And okay. Meredith Crandall, okay. staff. Okay. I'll ask Meredith to review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay. So, sorry. Give me one second. All right. So, for this is mostly for people at home watching via Orca. Um, so, for those at home watching via Orca, you can participate in tonight's design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform. You can use the link here to go directly to the Zoom meeting. You also have the option to call in at this phone number. And either way, there's the meeting ID and password. Um, if you're having any issues accessing the meeting, you can email me here. I'm going to review a few of the meeting procedures. Um, so if uh, you're in the Zoom meeting and you're having difficulties accessing the video conferencing features, please use the chat function in Zoom to contact me, or you can also email me um, using the same email address that's up on the screen. The Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live. Um, turning on your video is optional. All public testimony will be taken verbally, um, and the chat function should only be used for the troubleshooting or logistics questions that I mentioned earlier. Um, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. Um, if anybody does call in via phone, you can use the mute button on your phone or star six to mute and unmute. Um, right now, tonight, we just have two members of the public, both applicants. Um, but if somebody does call in um, a little bit later, if you're interested in speaking on a particular matter, please raise your hand um, if you're on the video function, or you can also use star nine on your phone, and that does a little raise hand symbol on Zoom. Um, for those attending, please wait to speak until the chair has recognized you or your application. Um, and then you can unmute your microphone, confirm that you can be heard, um, and then you can start speaking. If anyone calls in who's a member of the public and not necessarily an applicant, please make sure to state your full name and address for the record before you comment. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting and I get notice of that via email that somebody's having a hard time getting in and, and just can't even find out what's going on, then we'll have to continue the meeting to a time and place certain. If you're having connectivity issues while in Zoom, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. And then please note um, here for members of the public, if you're having problems seeing screen shares, um, you can access all of the meeting packet information at this link here. It's the city's agendas and minutes page. Okay, uh, please note that all votes taken during this meeting will be done by roll call vote. And I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you. You're welcome. And if everybody's had a chance, all committee members had a chance to look at the agenda, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Eric moves the agenda. I second. All second. Okay. For the agenda, speak your names. Eric, yes. Martha, yes. Liz, yes. Hannah, yes. Ben, yes. And Steve, yes. So we can go forward with the first application for 79 Barry Street. Owner Steve Rivellini, applicant Woodbelly Pizza for two signs, 
And is someone there from Woodbelly Pizza? Yep, Vetch here. Okay, D describe your science and application for us. So we're applying for a three by 10 sign vinyl out in the front of our shop just to give name to the face. And that's a temporary vinyl sign up there for the first quarter of the year likely and after that it'll be a metal and wood sign of the same dimensions and an extension to existing lighting to include two new out uh, junctions to put outdoor lighting at and that's it let me know if you want me to bring up the application information. Oh, that'd be great to share, I guess. Um, what, what was the dimension again? Uh, the sign, the vinyl sign is two and a half by 10. Or thereabouts. I, I have it written on the application. I'm not too sure. It's been yep. a while since I looked. On page, there's a picture of it on page three, it says two feet by eight feet. Ah, it might be an eight foot sign. Uh, it's just a printout from, uh, how do I not look at this anymore? There you yeah, go. that must have been what it was, two by eight. Well, what, we weren't sure because there was something on the, the first page. It talks about the vinyl wall sign. It shows two and a half by 10. But then on the picture, it shows two by eight. Uh, I'd have to double check. I'd err on the side of two and a half by 10. I'm not sure which one got printed off. It seems like we've had a lot of hands in this application and uh, clearly a lack of communication on which one we sent it with. Yeah, it looks, I'm sorry, I didn't catch this earlier, but it looks like you have the vinyl wall sign is one size and then the finished wall sign is a different size. Mm, that, that might be a definitive error. They should be the same size. Okay. Uh, both will be the size of the vinyl. Okay. The vinyl says two and a half by 10. Below that, it says finished wall one and a half by 12. And then the picture, it shows two by eight. Strange. It must be several different pages. I know I've sent y'all a handful of different ones over the last couple months. The two and a half by 10 is likely the vinyl sign that was just printed out. And our finished sign of our permanent sign will be the same size. It'll just be not vinyl. Okay, so you're going with the two and a half by 10? Yep. Liz, how are we doing, or uh, Meredith, how are we doing with uh, square footage? Um. So I would need to go back and double check that. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Audra is the one who who looked at this and, and figured it all out. Um, and I'm not seeing notes on the application form. She and I have been alternating days in the office. Um, so I, I mean, whatever we end up with, it it wouldn't exceed what they're what they're allowed for the for the frontage on the building. Um, okay. And we wouldn't make it any bigger than what you guys approved, for sure. We might have to decrease the size. But um, hold on one second. Um, so Vetch, what is, I'm gonna stop, well, I'll look it up separately, see if I can find it. Vetch, I'm trying to remember what's on that building right now. Nothing, any, nothing anymore. It used to yeah. be a big Fisher Auto sign. And they took that down when they left. Yep. So I, I think that they've got quite a bit of um, sign allowance. By, by the way, just for informational purposes, the there's a picture on page that shows the lettering and it shows the, the caps at 10 inches. And again, with 10 inch lettering, by sign designs, it's easily readable up to a hundred feet. So that's su certainly sufficient size for that location. 
Yeah, that was the idea for the finished signage. Those letters would be made of metal or uh, high density plastic and anchored to the wall with a metal bracket. Would individual letters be fixed to the wall or to a, a, a wooden background? or a wooden... Likely a wooden plate, each one affixed to that. Okay. And then the wooden plate would be attached to the building? That is correct. And when the wooden plate's attached to the building, it might be helpful to have it stand off the building a little bit so you don't get any moisture issues between the the wood background of the sign and the siding on the building. Absolutely. I, I'm okay with a pretty good sized sign there because it's kind of set back from the street. Okay. And uh, uh, it's one of the, when we do downtown signs, it's, uh, you know, they're more pedestrian. This is a drive-by sign. Okay, what we'll do is we'll just clarify if everybody's okay with the two and a half by 10. We'll just clarify that because it, on the front page, it says the finished wall sign is gonna be one and a half by 12. So we'll stick with the two and a half by 10. That seems to be the accepted sign is. Does anyone on the committee have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Not from me. Have, have we talked about colors? Not. No, I did. I don't. Is, do you see anything about the colors of the sign? Is there a color representation of the sign? The sign will be the. It's a wooden cookie, a wood cut, and black letters. So color beyond that, no. So wood wood cut on the logo and then black letters. Uh, yep. What about the login there? Is that going to still be black? Pardon? Um, I didn't catch that. The log logo that's part of the sign. That will be made of wood. So it'll be a natural wood color. Yep. Okay. That's cool. Thank you. The other the other thing that I'm not sure if it shows or not, the other thing that would make the sign really stand out against the building is to, as your, as your uh, pictorial representation of it shows, put a, put a thin black pinstripe around the perimeter of it, which will make it stand off the building. Yeah, that is a great idea. What about the lighting? Thanks for asking. I was going to ask about that. Um, there's existing, there's an existing junction where there's one exterior light and mm -hmm. it's just above the door. Okay. In the design application, we extend that junction with a bit of conduit and run two more boxes. Oh, look at that. There's the old one. Yep. So we'd run two more two more junctions and basically centered on the windows and just to the right of the windows. We have three exterior rated gooseneck lights mm -hmm. to replace the existing box with. And what kind of light was there now? It's an old halogen. And um, I don't know if I included a picture. I know I had one somewhere. It's just an old boxy brick looking thing. Okay. Does it have a gooseneck the way yours do? It does not. It is just a box. Okay. 
And we're trying to limit the amount of light thrown across the street. Mm -hmm. And so these would point down. Yep. They're yep. relatively low sub 40 watt LED. I think they're 40 watt. I could be off. I'll have to go check. Uh, this the the picture you sent says it's a 42 watt LED in the 3000 K range. Yep, that would be it then. 42 watt. Okay, that's that's certainly acceptable. The LED is certainly the the best way to go to get as much lighting with low energy use. Does anyone have any other questions? No. No. So we'll run through the criteria. And again, the only adjustments will be clarifying that the signs will be a maximum of two and a half feet by 10 feet, again, subject to any limitations on the frontage. And that the lettering will be 10 inch lettering. The lettering will be in black and the logo will be in a natural wood. And again, recommended uh, a black pinstripe around the perimeter of the sign. Were there any other, any other comments or adjustments that were suggested? Okay, then I can go through the criteria. The criteria for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations, additions to existing buildings shall be re respect and be compatible with the size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character of the primary building. Additions to the exterior shall not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the original building and should reflect the additions period and style. Those are acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, which would be including the lighting shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screen from public view. The three light fixtures are acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights and tabulature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing, prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration. The signs and the lighting does not obscure any of that. That's acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. Those are acceptable. There is a set of criteria specifically for signs. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior designs within the district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable. If the building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency and placement and size acceptable at this location. Sign placement be centered over the building entries at this location, that location over the windows is acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to uh, character defining materials on the building acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be appropriate scale, the appropriate scale for the existing building, acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must be overly, not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves, acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs on facades shall not conflict with or damage the building's architectural integrity 
or cover or impact character defining structural architectural features acceptable lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing shielding and photometrics to ensure there's appropriate lighting levels and illumination that focuses on the sign panels acceptable and with the other recommendations do i hear an approval by speaking your names eric this is martha i say yes liz yes anna says yes ben says yes and steve says yes so the application is approved thanks y'all You're welcome, Veg. We'll email you the um, recommendation form for you to sign off on because there were some recommendations on there. And then once we've either got email confirmation or the signed um, recommendation forms back, we'll issue the permit. Sounds great. Thank you all so much and have a happy new year. You too. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much and good luck with your project. Cheers. Okay. The next application is for 6 Berry Street, owner Overlake Park, applicant Edward Richardson for the front, L3C, again for projecting sign. Is someone there to describe the sign? Yep. It's, um, it's a projecting sign. Um, the story behind it is in uh, 2017, I believe, Jesse Cooper uh, filed a, a permit and uh, the front was awarded a permit for a, a larger sign and a smaller projecting sign. The smaller projecting sign never got installed before the permit expired. And uh, Jesse, who did the original application, is no longer with the front. So I've taken over trying to get this done. So I basically repurposed his materials in the uh, application I put in. Um, and, uh, and that's basically it. It's, uh, it's I think 20, by, 20 inches high and 30 inches deep, I mean wide. Um, it's the same, <clears throat> same material and finish as the sign that's already up there above the door. Um, and the, <clears throat> I think the installation is pretty straightforward. Uh, bolt, expanding bolts and glue into the uh, mortar. It was a recommendation on the previous permit to not um, damage the brick. I will um, pull up. There's one. Um, image in particular in the application that I think is helpful. Give me just a second. Um, the one that actually shows what the projecting sign would look like on site, um, where it's imposed over a photograph. There we go. Let me just rotate this. Sorry, it only lets me go clockwise, so I've got to go all the way around. There. I should also say that I made that sign and it is sitting in my shop. Um, so I'm probably not going to vote on this, but I can't answer any questions uh, that anybody may have about it. Good. How much clearance is there under the sign between the sign and the sidewalk? I think it's eight feet, 96 inches. Uh, it should be, Thank you. Yeah, should be on the sheet there. Yeah, it says 96 inches. Um, and it's the same design as the one that is already in existence. Is that true? Yeah. yeah, and actually it's, uh, the color is very difficult to pin down because it's very reflective, but mm -hmm. it's the same material and finish and font. And 
everything else and cut out letters. So the background is black and the letters are white? Uh, no, they're cut out of steel. Oh, okay. So it's steel and the letters are cut out, so. The whole thing is a powder coated gray and and then yeah, the letters are a cutout. So it's actually pretty interesting that the way the 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 is backwards when you walk one way or the other because it's cut out the way the front reads is kind of playful and interesting. Does anyone on the committee have any other questions, comments, or suggestions? Um, not for me. No. Nope. Um, I'm just going to note we had somebody come in while we were looking, doing the screen share, and Annika, I don't know if that's somebody who's on to talk about this application. If you are, Annika, feel free to speak up. Um, if you're not, then that's okay too. You can just observe. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Go Justin Burkott here. I was here for the VCFA discussion, but I may be premature and I'm under oh. my daughter's login. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to do all this. Oh, that's okay. Um, so this is Meredith. Yeah. Uh, feel free to email me or call me in a little bit. You logged into the design review committee hearing instead of the development review board hearing that starts at seven. Okay, I will come back at seven. Thank okay. you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, without further ado, we can go through the criteria for this project. Exterior design and materials. <coughs> They'll be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of existing building and other properties in the district. Additions are compatible with the size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character of the primary building. And they, the sign does not obscure or undermine essential form and character of the original building. That's acceptable. Architectural features including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulator trim, other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the, this existing building shall be considered. Um, and then again, the location of the sign is acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures, the, there's no lighting for this sign, is there? No. Okay, then that's certainly acceptable. And then there's a set of criteria for specifically four signs. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior design signs within the district shall be compatible with the building and structures of this and surrounding properties, acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. This location at the sign at this location is acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size acceptable here. It's recommended that sign placement be centered over entries. The projecting sign at this point is acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials. The sign being mounted in the mortar joints is acceptable which is the next recommendation in masonry buildings fasteners shall be in the mortar joints acceptable sign design color and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable sign support structure shall be compatible with the building architecture acceptable and lighting fixtures for signs and there's no lighting for the sign so that's certainly acceptable and then lighting fixtures, again, there's no lighting on this sign acceptable. 
All committee members in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Martha, I say yes. Liz, yes. Hannah says yes. And Steve says yes. So the sign is approved. Hold on, I'm gonna recuse myself on the uh, official okay. record. We didn't include you in the vote. Right. <laughs> so we're good, so it's approved. Good, thanks very much. And again, it's notated that Ben recused himself from the from the vote on the sign. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ned. Well, um, because you won't need to sign off on any recommendations or, or changes or anything, um, once we get the sign forms from Steve, we'll get that permit issued and sent out. Okay, terrific. Thanks a lot. You're Thank welcome. You. Okay. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye. And has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes of December 21st? Um, I did. This is Martha, and it was only you and I, and Hannah and I. So um, I moved to it, approve the minutes from December 21st. And I will second. All in favor of approving the minutes, speak your names. Martha. Hannah. And Steve. The minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business? Nope. So again, our other, our next meeting is Tuesday, January the 19th. And with that, any additional business, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Eric moves it. I'll second that, please. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Yeah. Eric. Liz. Hannah. Ben. And Steve. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Okay, thanks. thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. See you in two weeks. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.